here, Mike. This will explain everything. Howdy folks, welcome to Retsu Talk episode 27. You may feel the energy a bit different in here today, and it's because those of you listening to the archive version of this are missing out, because there is a stream of chats happening right now. People are listening to this live. All the energy of a live audience is here, only that audience is individual people awkwardly staring at an image of the Rutsu Talk microphone logo thingy on their twitch.tv monitors. And Slowbeef is absent today. He is uh, partying down in uh, Party City, USA, otherwise known as the state of Delaware. Uh, I don't know why he's partying in the state of Delaware, but that's where he is right now. And so in his stead, I have our favoritist Craigslist reading awkward Rutsu Gal Pal Cherry Doom. <laughs> Check. Hi. <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, when I listen to the Retsu uh, Talk podcast, I just hold my phone and watch the little logo. Oh, so you do so stare at it? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's true. If they're listening to it on the iTunes, um, you can iTunes.com. Uh, you can also stare at it there. There's many places you can stare <laughs> at this logo. Well, there are some people I hear when uh, the logo is po first posted on Facebook. Some people, when they're listening, like in their uh, they just you know go to Facebook and stare at the logo there while they listen. There's a lot of different places you can stare at things. <laughs> yep. So you know, choose the place of your choice and stare. We're all equal opportunity here. Yep. So how are you doing? Um, it's good. I'm a little nervous. I'm just going to pretend that this is already archived and this has already happened and it all went great. Yeah. Well, why are you nervous? Because you stream like literally every day, sometimes two to three times a day. I get like 10 people on average, and there's like 500. <laughs> it's no different. It's the same folks staring at their computers. They're, you know, I told you this during the tech check, but it helps to imagine your audience naked. They probably already are. <laughs> there true. are naked, nude people watching this with uh, popcorn or pizza in their hands or mouths or butts right now. It's, <laughs> how is it, how, what is there to be nervous about? That's true. Though I don't have anything Craigslist to read. I wish you told me to, that you were going to mention that that was oh, my yes. thing. Yes, I was going to ask uh, if, if there was anyone who posted about this stream on Craigslist hoping to have a <laughs> casual encounter in the chat. If you want a cyber in the chat, uh, let me know. <laughs> don't solicit me with business opportunities, though, please. What is that disclaimer that Craigslist always has at the bottom of their things? This person is not, um, oh, I don't know, who cares? Yeah. Let's talk about video games. Yeah, so uh, first before we do that, let's discuss the format here a little bit. So this is, uh, is going to be a very guest-driven stream in a little bit. I solicited some help from people to brought in topics to talk about. I chose some topics that uh, were interesting or that I thought enticed me in some way. Ran them by you as well, since you're co-hosting. want to make sure you're comfortable with all the topics that are brought in here. Uh, I'm sh yeah, it's fine. I'm sure I won't be yeah. like horribly offended by any of these video I was, game topics. I was, I was surprised at how serious a lot of the topic submissions were like really heavy debate shit that came in like uh hey Dibius, let's talk about our video games art well i mean are they it's a debate that hasn't been solved it's i i it's i hate that debate so much i don't um, I, I guess, okay <laughs> look i mean we talked about this a little bit but yeah it's it's the kind of debate that i think is inherently pointless to have because People who are very firmly on either side, nothing will change their minds. There is, there's nothing. You cannot bring any evidence to that will change anyone's minds. It's a pointless waste of time debate to have. People who think there are, you know, like the games that were made with kind of artistic intent in mind. People who aren't on the side of the uh, video games or art, they play, you know, their Halos and their Call of Duties and whatever. Or they think that's what video games are. You won't change their minds. That's my opinion. <laughs> Settled. 
Um, mine is that video games are exactly the same as movies. Some are made for uh, just to rake in tons of money, like Transformers, and some are, uh, you know, pet projects that the 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 filmmakers or the video game uh, developers really love. And uh, that's that. So we settled it. We settled the debate right here, live. <laughs> yep. And and archives. Don't forget uh, Lipson, <laughs> iTunes dot com. So and the uh, other kinds of debate. One person asked me to talk about comedy. And I thought that was interesting, but also something that I am ill-prepared to talk about. Because talking about comedy is very, can become very snobby, I think, or sound very snobby. Listen, and weird. I, I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts, so oh, I, I think I too, know a little bit about Sheridan. comedy. And... I think I listen to The Doug Loves Movies every week. And uh, have you heard of this thing called Earwolf, the Earwolf Network? Oh, yes. Uh, that's where premium comedy content comes from. <laughs> okay. In yep. my opinion, comedy is funny. Whoa. It's, don't bring any controversial <laughs> topics to this, please. I don't... Don't make the stream awkward. Okay. I've worked very hard for this. All right. But um, anyway, some people did have some good topics, and so I got back to them and said we would bring them in later, so we're going to have some guests later, but we're going to have a, a little mono-on-mono -mono chat here, just to get into the stream of things, if you'll part the... <laughs> That's a... <laughs> Speaking of streams, um, oh. I stream... The... Good segue, uh, Diabetes. Oh, shit. I almost Go, got You got this. You got this. Come on. Come on. Bring it home. Bring it home. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, I like streaming a lot. Um, it's a lot less effort than, a, you know, full-on LPs. There's no video editing. I've already talked about this in the last Retsu talk I was on. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm streaming Dark Souls right now. How is that? How is, so you're playing Dark Souls solely through streams, right? You're never uh, playing just on your own? I, if, I, if I do a little bit of grinding and I know exactly mm -hmm. what I need to do, then I'll, I'll just do it by myself. Uh, but um, Basically, it's all through stream, and I'm getting lots of help from people in the chat. Um, uh, mainly Gnome Bitten, uh, Dectalon, who gifted me the game. Thank you very much. Good and uh, Sorax. Um, and uh, some people might say that, like, you know, I'm ruining the game by not playing it by myself and, you know, being surprised by every death uh, and getting help and stuff. But, I mean... I'm only going to be playing it once. It's a really long game and huge, and I'm not going to be able to find all the uh, really cool and interesting stuff by myself. So, I mean, as much help as I can get, I love it. I think that's a good game to stream, actually, because that's my main complaint about Dark Souls, is that I get that it doesn't want to help the player, but I think it does that a little too much. Like, it gives you no help whatsoever beyond a simple tutorial, no clue where to go. Like, the trial and error is a little too much at times, I think. I still respect it for that. But I can see how it would be more enjoyable for a wider audience if they kind of had those lifelines to assist them throughout. So I'm on board with that. And you played it on your own, right? I did play on my own. I did look up things at times, like having no idea where to go, just kind of looking yeah. at a quick walkthrough, like, what's a good place to go? Now, then I would go out on my own and try to figure it out. But I, yeah, I sunk easily 40 to 50 hours into the game before I was finished. Man, I don't know how long I've been doing it. Um, I guess I could check Steam. But uh, yeah, games like where that are like heavy on exploration, I have to have somebody guide me through it. That's how I played uh, sure. the Metroid games and uh, a lot of the Zelda games too. I mean, I really like the games a lot, the art styles and the stories and all that, but I would not be able to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. Just because I would, I'm, uh, I get lost all the time. Maybe that's just because I'm a girl. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> I told you not to bring controversial topics into this room. <laughs> or into this archive podcast, lips and iTunes.com. All right. So what else is going on? Any other things you're playing, or is it just Dark Souls all the time? Um, just Dark Souls right now. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to play next. Um, maybe Max Payne 3. I've been meaning Ooh. to play. And uh, I've heard mediocre things. Me too. Hmm. I've been playing Papers, Please. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that, uh, but not much. Somebody gifted me the game kind of out of nowhere, and I was curious, so I thought, all right, I'll check this out. So it's a game that has a very difficult premise to sell. So y all you do is you're a guy who works at a checkpoint where you take passports from people, look at them, sign off on them, and let you right. in. 
but it's very deep gameplay as far as fact checking, cross referencing with your rule book, looking for discrepancies on their uh, on the paperwork that they give you, and every day your set of instructions changes, and I feel very dumb when I <laughs> when I play that game, like. <laughs> Like, you know, you stamp approval on something like, uh, there's a discrepancy. This was actually a girl and said he was a <laughs> dude. So, yeah, things like that. But I want to try to get into a little bit more because it looks very enticing. Like, terrorist attacks can happen yeah. at your checkpoints, and then the next day the rules get really strict. Uh -huh. But what, where I get frustrated with the game, though, is that it is... And this is my fault, because I, I think I don't have the personality for that kind of game, because I like to be able to plan things, get my plan of attack, and then go... But it's a, it's, you have a time limit every day. Right. So you have to let enough people in to make enough money to pay for your rent, for your heat, for your life, basically. But if you spend too much time kind of getting in the nitty gritty of the rule book and not letting enough people in, then you don't make enough money and you lose. But you got to let the right people in. So like Diner Dash. Yes. I'm guessing. That sounds great. I'll play it on my, my iPhone. But it's it's an interesting thing. It's a the game is ten bucks, very uh, affordable indie game. I'd, I'd recommend you check it out. Cool. If you get around to it. <laughs> I am a busy lady. All right. I've got, I've got a lot of Me knitting too. to Me do. Too. Yeah. Likewise. <laughs> well, what do you think? Anything else to talk about, or should we start bringing in our guests? I had a thing to say, but I forgot. So nope. Okay. Uh, do you want just total silence until then? <laughs> sure. Okay. Actually, I do have one guest I want to bring in before I bring in the scheduled guests. See if he picks up. Oh boy, a surprise guest. Who could it be? I'm definitely not looking at the Skype window right now. <laughs> Spoilers. Hello, special guest. Are you there? Nope, he's not. Uh, don't spoil he the gender of the failed. guest. All right, well, who cares? All right, so let's start to bring in our guests. The first topic that was brought to my attention was sent by uh, a lot of people. There are th there were three separate people who wanted to talk about speedrunning specifically. Uh, one person, I believe, is somewhat in the speedrunning community. I'm not sure about the second dude, and I think the third is just a fan of them in general. So we have a lot of perspectives to get to, so I'm going to slowly dial these people in because my Skype window is full of crap. You gotta hurry, man. You're not gonna beat the record. Oh my god. Aren't you using I gotta pay for my rent. to gotta, assist in the speed run of the I gotta the, get them in or I'll podcast? lose my money for my rent and heat. Hey, uh, can, we, can we speed run this part of the podcast and just like get it over with? Oh. Right in with the joke is slow freak. Freak. We. Freak. Freak. We. Three, two, freak. one. Speed running's cool. There's not a lot of drama. There are a lot of things to do, and it's fun to do. Bye. <laughs> Great. Oh. Well, that See was a that surprisingly... Uh, My eyes are opened. Surprisingly quick portion of the podcast. And I'm bringing in the third person, Shantae, who I believe is just a casual fan of speedrunning. So, while we wait for her... Hello! Oh, hello. You promised I would be the only girl! <laughs> I... Oh, no! I'm so sorry. I'll be a man now. <laughs> Look, I'm this, mad. this is an equal opportunity podcast, and you, Cherry Doom, do not afford enough opportunity. So, <laughs> so let's introduce all of these fine guests. Uh, Slow Freak, let's start with you. What are your speedrunning credentials, and why did you want to talk about it? Um, okay, so I'm Slow Freak. I speedrun SSX Tricky and Tony Hawk's Underground 2. I have the world record in Thug 2 Easy Mode. That means it's easy, took no talent whatsoever. So, uh, <laughs> um, that means I... That means I have no talent whatsoever, and I don't know why you brought me on here. Perfect. All right, Draco Dan, what are your credentials? Hi, I'm Draco Dan. I speedrun F Zero GX, and by that I mean I try to get good times, and I absolutely fail at it because the skill ceiling is massive. Fantastic. And Shante, your speedrunning credentials? I'm a fan. A fan. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, stuff. It's all. Getting all perspectives and broken mics at the same time. <laughs> and Cherry Doom, your speedrunning credentials? Uh, I don't, um, I like ones that are like two minutes long, but, uh, I don't really watch, like, the ones that are like eight hours. You have the world record for casual playthroughs of Dark Souls on Twitch.tv. <laughs> yeah. It's true. 
Well, Slow Freak, you seem to have the most exposure to the community and whatnot, so I've been a fan of speedrunning myself. I've watched a number of them, usually of shorter games. Uh, I used to hop on the Speed Demos Archive website where they would have, like, Mega Man speedruns, good thing to watch. Back when I uh, raced those types of games with the Racing Bros, I would often watch those for inspiration. But it's very much evolved from that into this whole big thing. Like, I recently watched this uh, charity marathon that happened where, you know, half of the screen was a random game and the other half was this whole room of people in a hotel room somewhere who apparently all met, like, a convention kind of setting. So it's really evolved in a lot of ways, and I'm curious as to, from your point of view, and Draco Dan, you can chip in too, Shantae as well, mm. um, how did it evolve from, how did it evolve so much? Where did it all come from? The origin story, if you will. Firstly, I think you're talking about uh, Summer Games Done Quick. That happened uh, a couple weeks ago. Yes, that was it. Yeah. 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 And um, I don't have a lot of info on like how it started, but I can tell you kind of how speedrunning started in general, and that was with a game called Quake. It's a really underground game. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, mm -hmm. like I haven't been in the speedrunning scene for a long time. I've been in for about like six months. I picked it up over the summer. And um, I think speedrunning is kind of a thing that, like, it was bound to happen at some point because people kind of are, they kind of want to bring games to their limit, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So um, I think speedrunning is a really, really good way to do that. And with the glitches that come with games, it kind of it kind of makes it really easy to do that and makes it really fun. Like in SSX Tricky... Um, there, you can go out of bounds on a lot of the levels and just kind of fall right to the end. And that makes the game really... Re I mean, it's interesting regardless, but it's really fun to be able to break the game and do things that you're not supposed to do. Did speedrunning so start... Um, was it an offshoot of tool-assisted runs? Or did that I, come first? What is tool-assisted speedrunning, exactly? Um, okay, all the um, way around, I believe. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry for that, I Pandora's know. box. <laughs> uh, Cherry Doom, I'm sorry. Tool assistance Pandora's speed running. It's really, it's really, really controversial. I'm so offended that you brought that up. <laughs> I just keep bringing the controversy. Anyways, um, tool assistance speed running is. You know what an em You obviously know what an emulator is, right? Uh, I'm a girl, so of course. Um, basically, some emulators have the capability to record the buttons you press when you press them. But they also have the ability to advance, like, frame by frame. So you can press, you can slow the game down really a lot. And then you can press the buttons on the exact frame that you would want to. So tool assisted speed on is basically slowing the game down, making it go as fast as you want to get, to get rid of the reflex, you know, to get rid of the uh, human inability to do things perfectly. Oh, wow. I had no idea. <laughs> I thought it was, like, just, like, I don't know, the game jumps for you. Can I uh, plug tasvideos.org? They have really, really good ones. No. Yeah. All right. Um, We're editing that, that out. We're editing that out. That's I, yeah. that's I can't believe you just did that. I've already taken it out of my audacity, even Thank though I'm you. recording it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just what I was wondering. If speedrunning was a reaction to the tassing, if it was like, well, wouldn't it be more interesting if you did introduce the human element to it, or if it was the other way around, where it was like, what if you removed the human element, then how fast could you beat this game? Like a chicken yeah, and egg thing. That... Do you want me to give you the history of tool-assisted speedrunning, or would that take too long? As long as you speedrun it. Uh, tool-assisted, please. All right. Yeah. Um, basically, there is a game, I, there's some guy with a Japanese game, I hope that doesn't sound offensive. But um, Ooh. this one guy with a, uh, he wanted to, he had an emulator and he just kind of slowed down the game and beat it really quickly. So he just, people were thinking that it was actually legit gameplay when in actuality it was tool assisted. So people at first thought that that was kind of cheating. And you can find the original tool assisted speedrun of Super Mario Bros. 3 on tasvideos.org. <laughs> but um... <laughs> You can find that, and then people thought, well, we can make it better. And so it basically got better and better and better until tool-assisted speedrunning got really big. And, and now you know. Where, that's where we are. So, Draco Dan, what's you're a little bit involved in the community. What's your whole perspective about it? What is Slow Freak left out? Um, 
Well, I guess in terms of tool-assisted speedrunning, um, an important element of it is also that um, you learn the game's mechanics in great detail, and one of the ways that that comes into play is through the use of luck manipulation. Like, any time there's randomness in a game, um, tool-assisted speedruns aren't just about perfecting the human element, but perfecting the non-human element by um, doing stuff such as finding out uh, why the game does a specific look roll on a certain frame and how you can manipulate it into doing what you want. So there's that, certainly. Mm. So sure, Jim, just do that on Dark Souls and you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, sounds easy. (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Like, I suppose if you want to have, like, the typical game that is, like, 95% luck manipulation in a speedrun, it's Pokemon. Because it's just doing all sorts of stuff, like finding perfect encounters, trying to manipulate um, critical hits and misses, all that sort of thing. I, I would not think know a, how to run that game. Yeah, it I would think like, a game with like a random element like that would be just impossible. Yeah, there is more or less one person who seriously tries to speedrun the Pokemon games without tools, and ninety percent of the time, it's resetting the run in the first two minutes. Wow. It's it's extremely difficult because of all the luck involved. And yeah, would... there's a huge audience for it. <laughs> Yeah, oddly enough. Have you seen the people speedrunning Final Fantasy? No, I'm, in that charity stream, I saw a dude speedrun Paper Mario, which was an interesting choice. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting, just because it's so turn-based, you would expect there to be <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, like if you're trying to make a record or anything, any kind of RPG game with that um, element of randomness just seems impossible. <laughs> Supposedly, though, I've heard some. I've heard some people saying that a couple of the Final Fantasy games have comparatively easy um, RNG engines to manipulate. I don't know the details of it, but I've heard multiple people saying that the Final Fantasy games, a couple of them, are some of the easiest games to manipulate. I don't really know how it works. Uh, well, Materia, I, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> There's just one Im- person. Sorry, go Sherry ahead. Jim, you have the floor. Yeah. I was going to say, I would imagine that you know, like. You have to have tons of passion about one certain game in order to get so good at it that you are trying to be the fastest person to do it. But like, I um, I would think it might make you like the game a little less if you are having a lot of frustration about it. Yeah, any that, kind of RPG, especially. Yeah. Or any long game period where it takes, I don't know, an hour or more to have to basically do it perfectly without fucking up once. I've uh, tuned into a few of, yes. I think, Josh Amu's, uh his speedruns of San Andreas, and he just seems, like, so frustrated <laughs> all the it's time. A, it's a rule of speedrunning. You have to hate the game you play, otherwise you, you're not really <laughs> speedrunning the game. It's, also, it's, it's like two different games. It's, it's like the broken game and the casual game. I think they would start to hate the broken game, but still like the casual game, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely true, because the frustration of trying to run an entire game in one session, you can break that down into generally trying to do two categories. There's generally like um, glitchless runs and glitched runs. Like Say if you're trying to run Ocarina of Time, you can either do all of the dungeons and that'll take over two hours to do. But the glitched run of Ocarina of Time is 20 minutes. So you can, if you don't want to deal with having to do a lot more of the game and try and get it all perfectly in one session. You can just do the glitch drum, which is a lot shorter. Isn't it the is same that... with Mario 64 too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mario 64, you don't strictly need any stars to complete it, but on real speed runs, like not tool assisted, it's generally agreed that 16 stars is the minimum. Oh, real speed runs, huh? Now you're judging. <laughs> don't people do like? Huh? Don't people do one star speed runs a lot? I mean, not a lot, but I mean, it's just extremely the... difficult because one of because the main trick involved in breaking Mario 64 is the BLJ or the backwards long jump, in which you um, use the long jump backwards um, many times in quick succession to quickly build up lots of speed, enough speed, in fact, to break through walls and doors, which is how you get through the star doors, so that you don't need enough stars to get into the Bowser levels, for example. But it's just extremely difficult to pull off. I'm not even sure if anyone's done a console zero star run. I just know that 16 star is the standard for doing a Mario 64 speed run. So breaking Mario 64 has become such a thing that they basically militarize some of the game mechanics into initials. Oh, absolutely. So you've oh, got yeah. a BLJ, and then you LJ games. over the gap, and then you DJ. 
up to the BK, that's the Bobom King. Yeah, if you check <laughs> taskvideos.org, there's many categories for Mario 64 alone. There's like zero star run, 70 star run without BLJ, 120 star. They, they've got so many runs off that game alone. There's like a wiki for all the uh, acronyms that you can... Yes. A wiki? Well, not a wiki, but there's a page. Have you considered just spelling? <laughs> I mean, it takes so long, dude. Okay, let me type it on my keyboard. B O B. God damn it, this is taking forever. And we try here. Okay, let's just type. Yeah, that checks out. B B K. B B K. C. Bob on Kingdom or whatever the hell it's called. Bob on Battlefield. It B -B -B. is speed running, so. dude. Yeah, see. B B B B B. It's so fast. Is there a speed run of Mario teaches typing? <laughs> Bro, I would cool not doubt that. Actually, it's on PC. All right, well, uh, what haven't we covered? Anything else you guys wanted to bring up about the whole speedrun thing? What's everybody's favorite speedrun? Oh, yeah, good question. Excellent question, um, Charidian, thank you. That is a good question. I, I would that, probably uh, say, um, when we, you mentioned the charity events before, um, anybody who has not done so so far should check out um, Yoshi Fan's run of F-Zero GX at Awesome Games. Oh, my. Yes, I, I was going to say something else, but that is fantastic. That was that was a good run. It was the run of that event, if in my opinion. It was, yeah, it was it was the best. I'm so mad that I missed it because like I wanted. Yeah. To... Slow freak, your favorite? <laughs> I I don't want to say F G O G X because that because Jack already said that one, but um I'm also gonna say A G D Q. Um, Wind Waker is a really fun game because it's five hours long. <laughs> to do any percent, yeah. which. Any percent means like just beat the game as fast as possible, no restrictions. But um, any percent is five hours, but it has so many different glitches and so many different interesting things. And then since it's so long, you can kind of pack a lot of different uh, things inside of it. Yes, yeah. I guess the Wind Waker any percent speed runs also sort of an anomaly in that it's been so researched and practiced that they've actually, through um, glitches such as storage, they've managed to use glitches and tricks which were originally thought to be TAS only. Yeah, that's that's the really crazy thing. I wouldn't think Wind Waker is the kind of game to get that sort of intense research, but it's, it's really awesome. Yeah. And uh, Shantae, your favorite? Uh, I think it'd be okay with time, honestly. Just the fact that you can play your own with a hook shot is kind of the thing in the world to me. And I, the fact that it's 10 minutes long when it's supposed to be like 5 or however long and kind of intense. If I had to do a speed run, it would probably be a green of time, even though I know it's a big old commitment, but it just seems fun. And Sherry Doom. Um. Yeah, five seconds. Gosh. Four. Mario. Three. 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 Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, oh, I'm I don't sorry. Know. <laughs> and there we have it. Oh, uh, I know. Oh. Um, MSG3, of course. MGS3. <laughs> Oh yeah. Reset. MSG. I like to speed run when I eat at a Chinese restaurant as well. <laughs> any, yeah. any MGS game run perfectly is a magnificent yep. speed run to watch. Nice. Yeah. Can I just throw something in before we leave? Yes, you may. You were talking about Final Fantasy VI, a ROM hack you were playing on a podcast you did earlier, right? That is correct. That's accurate. Well, this isn't Final Fantasy VI, but that some guy named Sarisa, I think he does Final Fantasy VII speedruns, and I think the world record for that game is nine hours. Nine hours. Yeah, I don't get... Okay, here's something even better. You know San Andreas, you were talking about Josh Moose doing a San Andreas speedrun? Mm hmm People are routing for that game, 100%, and the estimated time for that one is 20 hours. And I don't, like, I don't get how you could do that sort of speedrun, because you'd have to like piss in a bottle the whole run and then just go to sleep when you're done. <laughs> oh, I do Suddenly that already. Doing, so. it, doing it single segment would be next to fucking impossible. But yeah, mm -hmm. you could do it multi-segment, sure. Yeah, I piss in a bottle regardless, even if my run's like 10 minutes <laughs> long. But um, like, I don't get it. I suppose building on what you say there about um, the speedrun being nine hours long, it really goes with RPG speedruns, because my... Um, favorite game, which is a PS1 game, Grandia, only recently got a speed run, and that's like 16 hours long. I think I think that is single segment as well. <laughs> I ha I haven't watched it yet. But so he holds the record just because he's the only guy. person that's bothered, right? Yes, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely it's definitely world yeah. record because it's the only existing speed run of that game so far. Nice. Well, gentlemen, 
Thank you very much. We lost uh, Shante, I believe, in a, in a Skype tornado. But uh, thanks so much for your time. I think yeah, we've learned a lot about speedrunning and ourselves. Yeah, thank you in for having us. In record time. In record time. Yes. Sweet. Absolutely. And we learned some fun lessons on the way. Oh. Group on, hug, you know. guys. So thank you, gentlemen. I'm now rudely hanging up on you. Okay, that's right. fine. Later, fellas. See ya. See ya. Bye. All right. That All was right. pretty interesting. I, I, had, I, I was uh, very interested in the, the thing about uh, task runs. I had no idea. Oh, good, because I thought it were... was a disaster. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, boy. What a train wreck. Are you trying again on this uh, super secret special guest? I'm trying to get on the special guest because he's bothered me a few times. Let's <laughs> see if I can uh, nab this gentleman. Very persistent. He's supposedly Red Supreme's biggest fan. <laughs> so try to bring him in to discuss whatever it is you want to talk about. But this again, would be a real uh, opportunity for him. Yeah, but again, to... not picking up. <laughs> What's he bothering about you about and then not picking up? Right? I don't know. Maybe he's on a on his phone or something. But speaking of phones, the next guest that we have lined up is is live on the scene at the topic that he wants to talk about. Whoa! So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, Red Supre has reporters that they dispatch to places. Hey, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. oh, hello, hello, hello. I'm on hello. The are, are you Red Supre's biggest fan? I am the hugest. Okay, so uh, what's up? Uh, that was I'm on the phone, hon. <laughs> this is we know it, you're married. Slowly, you, you don't have to tell me that, okay? It's awkward. Absolutely. Are you still at the party? No, uh, I just got back. And now All right, uh, put down the creepy the pasta, please. We're not doing that today. Uh, I, get, I cannot tell you how great speedrun chat is. <laughs> that was awesome. Very well done. Yeah, thank you. I was so annoyed. I wanted to weigh in on RNG stuff, too. Oh, thank God. No, I was going to talk about entropy and like, how you do luck manipulation. Let's shoot our viewers show up to the tens of thousands. I know. <laughs> because that's how the RNG is going to come out. <laughs> so if you're becoming more robotic by the second. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I encountered a new type of video game. Oh Did you? you the urinal I'm going to kick you out in a second because you're impossible to hear. You know, have fun, guys. <laughs> I did see um, your, your your urinal tweets. Yeah. Oh was, yeah. I was, right. I was shocked. Did you sandcastle get... that shit? Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, fuck it. I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> wow. We're never having that guest back. <laughs> what a disaster. So, uh, any other thoughts on speedrunning? While well, it's just us and not those freaks we had on earlier. <laughs> Um, I would like to see. Uh, I would like to know what the short, the shortest speed run and the longest speed run are. Fair question. Fair question. I would imagine the longest speed run is uh, World of Warcraft or some similar game. Oh yeah, oh, that'd be ridiculous. How do you do? Is it like a speed run with a goal? Uh, like what do you fast, mean? Like fastest to defeat super oh, powerful boss to, dude. To the last boss or fastest, fastest to raid to the level shit. seventy. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well. Retsu talk means to make you think about things, so glad we did that. Yeah. So let's go to our next guest. Our next guest is, um, I'm just going to read the, uh, the sales pitch he gave me. I'm at an anime convention right now. This is a quote. I'm not, this isn't me saying this. I'm at an anime convention right now, and there's a ton of Danganronpa cosplayers. I'm wearing a t-shirt with a paywall on it to see what kind of reactions I get. So if, uh, so if you want, we can chat about that and cons in general. The only problem is I'll have Skype on my phone, so the quality won't be best, and I can't record. That's okay. So this is a friend of the show, dude we met at PAX, Turbo C, something awful goon, good guy. And we're going to hear him live, reporting on the scene at an anime convention. He had to attend to a medical emergency, I'm not making that up, uh, so we'll get some uh, word on that as well. There's an anime emergency at the anime con. Someone's eyes are too big. Someone's eyes are too big. Someone is too kawaii and needs a CPR sign. <laughs> so we're calling Turbo C. Still calling Turbo C. C is for conventions. <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello. And the moment he picks up, we hear an anime scream in the background. How's it going, Turbo? <laughs> There's a lot of anime around me, but 
So you are live on the scene at an anime convention. What convention is it? What's going on? Give us the latest. Uh, this is Otakon. Uh, oh, the big as one. Far as I know. Oh. Yeah, that's that's like the biggest anime convention or whatever. So, yeah, there's a, a lot going on right now. What's the and, uh, Danganronpa to Homestuck cosplay ratio? <laughs> it's actually like one to one. There's not much Homestuck wow. this year, but there's a lot of Rompa. A lot of Rompa. And I, so I you're wearing a very... and you're wearing a paywall shirt, what right? Was that? You're wearing a paywall shirt. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I took a picture of the paywall, put it on the t-shirt, and uh, ran into one of the Danganronpa photo shoots. So how so, what kind of sorts of uh, reactions have you gotten? Like, like, like that, that, that. <laughs> what well, sort of that... reactions? Sorry, it was breaking up again. No problem. What sort of reactions have you gotten? Oh, uh, everyone's no one's been like throwing knives at me or anything. Everyone's just sort of playful about. It. Lots of tickle and fights people, and such. Yeah. Some people are like people are. You know, some people are being you know serious being like oh this is the bane of my existence <laughs> but yeah and so you had People a was funny. You, you had a medical emergency to attend to or to help with yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it was just kinda oh. Oh, boy. oh boy we're losing you turbo like like i guess an hour ago before you called yeah. um, for those of you who couldn't hear him when he was breaking up uh, uh oh <laughs> Uh, uh, that was a medical medical emergency. I'm breaking up. Yeah, that was a medical problem. We'll call nine one one immediately. What else have you yeah. seen on the floor? Anything weird? So you guys can hear me now. Uh, yeah. Adequately. Um. Yeah, there's been uh some not not weirder than normal, I guess, because I've been here before, but. I mean, it's definitely not like your packs where it's mostly people in normal clothes. There's anime. There's people dressed up as anime from stuff I've never heard of and probably don't want to hear of. Nice. So nothing like too crazy or like something that I would divert my eyes from. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what that would even be. Yeah, I don't think so. It's uh, there was BronyCon here last weekend though, which I didn't go to, so maybe that's where you would uh, find that sort of stuff. All right, well, oh, watch yeah. out for dung on the floors or anything like that. <laughs> Horse manure. Yeah, exactly. It's dangerous. Money manure. All right, well, Turbo, we're losing you a little bit, so thank you for the update. Sure. And we will see and... you at next PAX, friend. Yeah, probably. Definitely. All right. Take care. All right. Take it See easy. Ya. Later. <sighs> so well, the, that was unfortunate. That's that's the, the risk the you take quality. when people are on their phones. I think we're like 0 for 3 on people with phones. Shanti <laughs> sounded like she was on a phone. Slowbeep yeah. was on a phone. Turbo C was on a phone. We can't have any more phones on this podcast, but fortunately the rest of our lineup are regular people, and by regular people I mean people who are spending their Sundays staring at their computer waiting to get a Skype call from me. <laughs> so that's pretty exciting. Uh, Cherry, do you have any thoughts on what we just, uh, just heard? Uh, well, <laughs> I, have some, I have some opinions about the, Don, the Danganronpa fiasco. I don't know if Here I don't want to go. offend any, any uh, goons. Though, yeah, well, you know what? Slowbeef's not here. About it. Slowbeef's not here. He can't contribute to this, so I'm going to let all the Danganronpa opinions sound out without his interference. Go ahead. Um, okay, basically, I think that, you know, um, this essay might be a little insular and in that they're kind of thinking of Danganronpa as something that is their own. And that's, I mean, that's sort of true because that's like where the only full translation is right now. But um, I think it has the same amount of fandom and, you know, less fandom than any other, uh, an other popular anime or, you know, Pokemon has a huge fan, annoying fandom. Uh, same with, uh, you know, a lot of anime and Homestuck and all that kind of thing. I mean, it's just the problem is that it's all centered on SA because that's where it is. And I think that if uh, people don't want to, them people, you know, paying low tax ten dollars, then they should uh, just take initiative and post it somewhere free so that all the uh, fangirls can be there instead of uh, on the sacred uh, form of SA. 
Do you think some of the draw is that people just want to be able to talk to each other? I know speculation's the big thing. Well, I mean, they can do that anywhere, but can I mean, they it's... Like, yeah, you, they... like on somewhere like Tumblr, you're kind of just yelling into a void. Like, it's easy to not see that, whereas at the only forum where it's posted, you kind of have to see it. And I then kind of have to take it. Post it on like a free uh, Donk and Rampa only forum or something. Is does anyone could have... exist there though? Well, if people, if it was heavily like advertised, uh, then Maybe. yeah, I think so. I mean, someone found out about Donk and Rampa from SA, so if they were just like diverted to somewhere else, I mean, then the problem would be solved, quote unquote. <laughs> right. Well, that was uh, that was Dank and Rampa chat. And now it's over forever, I hope. It's, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll never hear about Danganronpa ever again. <laughs> Though I would like to defend Slow Beef on one count. I know he's gotten some flack for being like, you know, why does he complain so much about the Danganronpa? You know, that's exactly verbatim what they say. Mm -hmm. And I think, to be fair, I, I think of it in this kind of metaphor. So imagine you're really into Breaking Bad. I am. I don't have to imagine anything. I like to watch Breaking Bad at the comfort of my couch watching the TV. Imagine I had to watch Breaking Bad in a crowded movie theater. I was an usher. Everybody was yelling all the time. And I had to, you know, tell people to boot people from the theater, basically. I would enjoy Breaking Bad a lot less if that was the only way I could experience it. I guess, but you don't have to. I mean, I guess if you're the mod, then you technically do have to read everybody's complaints. But yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. But Slowbeef's the only person who should complain because everybody else can just read Oren Ronan's posts. Now, so. what I do think Slowbeef should do more of, you know, punt it over to one of the other games mods if you're annoyed. You know, you, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be just you. There are other people who do it. So that's it. That's all. All right. Seriously, Dangan Rampa chat. Now, Dangan Rampa chat's over. I still haven't read either thread. <laughs> All right, so who do we have next? Next is a gentleman who his sales pitch was very simple. He said, Hi, Diabetes, I'd like to add you as a contact. For I am Terosan, one of the contributors for the Cubex 55 The Long Plays channel. So, yeah, we've done a lot of long plays from the Cubex 55 channel, and I think it would be nice to hear from somebody who contributes to it, talks a little bit about it, so let's give him a call. His name is the the mighty cherry. Gray, is that a Pokemon thing? The mighty cherry Graymon. Uh, I don't. I, I don't think know that. So. That'll, that'll be more the top of a, question. Oh, maybe like Charizard and then Gray something. I I don't know. Are you there? Uh, You're on the air. This is Retsu Talk. Hello. No, he's not on. The, there he is. Hello. 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 Uh, what were your words? Hello, Tarosan. Hi. How are you? I'm doing very good, actually. Thank you very good. much. So you are a contributor to the Cubex 55 account, which we have desperately milked for content for many generations <laughs> now. Yes, indeed. I have, am one of the contributors, yes. Have we talked over a game that you have recorded? Uh, no. Oh, well. We, well, haven't, I, uh, we haven't talked over, but I know of s several people that you have actually uh, talked over. So I think Salauchi is one of them. I'm not sh quite sure. Can't remember. Are they happy when we talk over one of their games, or are they like? I. They are very happy about the about uh, you guys talking over. I think it's more they're happy about the exposure they got. So, mm. the exposure, nice. Yeah, I would never heard of long plays before. What exactly is like the purpose? The purpose of a long play is simply put, it's a, it's better than a let's play. It's just essentially better. Oh. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> yes, no talking. And it's essentially the entire length of the, of the game. Just, so basically uh, just showcasing the game. Just basically, yeah, just showing off the entirety of the game and uh, every secret, every 100% place, you know, just uh, essentially just how you get through a certain game, how, how every area, you know. Sorry, I'm kind of nervous. This is my first time in a Don't be nervous. Chat. It's all good. Again, like I told Cherry Doom, these are just naked people with popcorn and pizza <laughs> in their laps staring at a logo on a Twitch monitor. Yes. These are not intimidating people. They're not going to come hunt you down. 
Yes, and that's the kind of person, because I'm actually on YouTube as well, so, <laughs> yeah, if I screw this one up, uh, yeah, I'll be getting Yeah, it. and YouTube is also full of naked people with popcorn <laughs> and churros and whatever, so there's nothing to Sounds worry about. Sounds really good right now. So let Every... me ask you this, yes. Taromon. Yes. So, so yeah. when you're doing a long play, it, it's always struck me as kind of a casual playthrough, but is that, is that it, or do you try to play through the game a few times to make sure you're covering uh, all the spots? You're obviously not trying to play fast. Essentially, you go through the game, you, go, you remember every secret you go through. If you make a mistake, you could rewind to the point, you could save over the mis save over where you had previously, re go, re go back to where you was previously and avoid that mistake. It's essentially using the um, TAS methods to uh, record essentially a perfect game. So, you know, it's not, sort of like re-recording. That's why it's called re-recording. -re you record over the mistake, so... So does speed ever play a factor into it? Uh, it's not exactly speed. It's more like you want the casual progression of the game. It's more... You, you just basically... You don't rush through it. You just take your leisurely time. So basically Especially you want to play... Especially on Dark Seed 2. <laughs> well, Dark uh, Seed 2, I don't think, came from the Cubex 55 account. I don't think... So. I'm not sure on that one. Um, I think so. Oh, it did? I'm, I can't remember, so... I would, I'll probably be lying, but I don't think it is there yet, so... Because if it did, that, you know, takes her whole pitch about why long plays are great out the window. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> that was the worst long play I've ever seen. No. I yeah. Um, there, are, I... there are some crap ones, so... <laughs> oh, I've only seen uh, the ones that uh, Ritzy Play has done, and they seem to be mainly adventure games, uh, games that, you know, don't... Um, Aren't, you know, FPSs or anything, is that, like, the main kind of game? Like, games that do require, like, showing off, like, the story and the arc of the game? Or is it just any game? It's essentially any game, really. FPSs, adventure games, platform games. Just pick a genre and then just do whatever you like, really. All right, so answer me this, Long Plays Man. Yes. <laughs> So there is obviously an inherent audience for Cubex 55. They have a number of subscribers on YouTube. It's why? A very odd... Yeah. Why do people prefer that sort of exposure to a game as opposed to a speed run that we just talked about in the last segment or two segments ago? Because essentially, sometimes people want to like um, casually relax as they either they someone like you uh, you you pretty much have something to do right, and you don't want to casually speed run through a game. Well, you could just watch a video from a cute long place channel. Uh, whilst you're doing something, you can actually have something to listen to in the background. It's just essentially quality entertainment whilst you're doing something else. Playing a game so you don't have to. Yeah, it's essentially it. We uh, just that's Let's Play's motto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But that's the problem, is, though. We don't speak. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, that's what Slouchy kind of says. We don't really speak. Let's Play is just essentially, ugh. And long places like, so, yay! <laughs> So, do you guys get, uh, I mean, is the fact that your game, the games are, uh, rets you played, or is that, like, um, it, an, a great offense or anything? Yeah, I would imagine no, that, no, but... no, 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 it's not a great offense at all. For what I, for what I could tell, it's more like a huge privilege, so. To get, to get videos exposed to each channel, because every time that you guys, like, do a, a, a ret to pray of a long plays video, it gets more exposure. So... Mm. That's exactly, essentially it, and a lot more people come to the channel, more subscribers, and uh, everyone's happy. Yeah, well, the Cubex 55 guy, when we reached out to him and said, hey, do you mind if we talk over your stuff? He's like, yeah, just tell you, tell them where it came from, and, you know, we scratched their back, and, uh, you know, scratched ours in return, giving us lots of good content. Lots of good games that I did not know existed. Aye, exactly. There's a lot of games no one knows existed. So uh, what, uh, what kind of games uh, do you do? Right. Of. Uh, I've done uh, some Mega Man games. I've done Metroid games. I've done pff, Cybernator. I've done. Pff, let's see, trying to get off my head. I've done, done some Goemon games. I've done some. Oh, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of games. About uh, roughly, I'm up to fifty at the moment. I've just recently recorded Silent Hill, but I'm having problems encoding it. So. Which one? The first one. The first Silent Hill. You have no idea how difficult it is to play a regular Silent Hill game on an NES <laughs> that pretty much skips forward all the time. So you try and find different versions of it, but it's just, ugh. 
<laughs> stupid, stupid skipping speed problems. I mean, just admit that you're too scared to finish it. <laughs> I have finished the game. The problem is, though, encoding the bastard. Just admit you're too scared to encode the bastard. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All so, right, fine. I'm scared about encoding the bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the whole community, is there some kind of order to things? Because there's tons of contributors on the channel, so is it just, you know, yeah, come on in, play whatever you want, upload it whenever? Is there some kind of schedule they try to maintain where you do X game part uh, uh, sometime the week or the month, or how does that work? It's usually a certain amount of games a day, so I'm trying to think of something like 10 or 12 games a day recently. Oh, it wow. used to be like, five, what, four, five or six? But that's when we became professional, and uh, there's more like 10 to 12 now, so demand supplies requirement. So now it's become a professional operation. Well, yeah, we are kind of partnered from part of full screen shit. So. Yeah, exactly. How much do you get from ad revenue? <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not legally obliged to say. Awkward. <laughs> I know. Any other, uh, any other thoughts on long plays or anything else you'd like to bring up? Anything you'd like to plug? Uh, apart from the Long Place channel, which is Cubex 55, there's my channel specifically, that's Heavy Base X. Um, that's much I can say, really. It's been real nice, it's been good being on here, I mean, it's real, it's a real big privilege to be on the Red Supreme, I mean. Well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, all right, thanks. All right, uh, have uh, a good one, sir. Uh, okay. Good luck with uh, encoding that spooky game. Oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. Bye-bye, folks. Later. Later. Bye. Bye. Uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Nice to see, uh, so to hear from someone you're exploiting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, Charity, what would you long play if you could long play a game? If you wanted to show off something exposed uh, to people, what would it be? Probably. I mean, I guess I sort of do long plays. I'm, I'm playing through uh, when I get the chance. Um... Oh, I forgot to say that I've, I've been playing through the Metal Gear Solid series. Um, for the I first did... time? No, no, no. For oh. like the fourth time. Ah. Uh, I'm showing it off to Rock Tumblr, who wants to see it but won't play it on his own. Uh, oh. So I stream it, and um, yeah, I mean, those are the those are my favorite video games, uh, my favorite game series. So yeah, I'd probably do a long play of that. Favorite game series ever, really? Yeah, I think so. Even portable ops. Nope. Okay. Even Metal Gear Acid? Nope. <laughs> Even Metal Gear Advent Children? All right. Okay. This isn't that Final Fantasy. <laughs> well. All right. So our next guest we have lined up, uh, he had an interesting sales pitch. This one sold me because we here at Red Supre, you know, we tend to be on the same side on most things. We tend, We don't tend to disagree much about stuff. So that's why I wanted to get somebody who had an alternate perspective on something. And that something is this little known game series called um uh Poke Emon. Have you heard uh, have you heard of that? I think it's uh Poke sorry. Poke 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 Poc Emon? Uh, uh I I don't want to take a chance at butchering the name, so Why, right, because there's supposed to be an accent mark somewhere? I don't. Right. I'm not comfortable. Maybe an umlaut that's missing. Trying to say it. <laughs> All right. Well, here is his sales pitch. This man named gentleman is John. He said, "Quote: I'd like to talk, or perhaps a better term would be defend, something that most LPs and many gamers tend to frown upon. Po 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 Pocky po po and in particular, po." Kim just, on LP. Just stop trying po or commit to one. Pokemon LPs? Sure I'd like to discuss to why I think the game itself receives criticism and point out some of the reasons why even people who have never laid hands on a Pokemon game should try it, at least once, because it might surprise them. I'd also like to discuss why I think most Pokemon LPs tend to be terrible and also show that it is possible to record a good Pokemon LP and explain why I think so and what one would entail. I don't think anything like this has ever been brought up on Retsu Talk. It hasn't. I'd love to discuss it. Hope you agree. I can elaborate on any detail or better explain what I have in mind if need be. And that is what I am giving you, Mr. John Pete, the opportunity to do if I can find your name, which I think I have lost on oh my uh, thing. So, Professional podcaster, diabetes. Uh, behind the scenes, Skype search chat. Here he is. There we go. Bringing him in. 
Mr. John P. Hello. Hello, John P. How are things going? I'm good, you? Very good, thank you. So, Pokemon. Little known game series, not a lot of people have heard of it. (laughs) Yeah, just a couple. Um, I feel like the game gets a really bad rap just because of the kind of people who play it. Okay. Uh, Go into that a little bit. What what do you think the perception is from, say, I, uh, people who are in this chat, for example? The sort of audience. I'd, I'd say generally the perception would be that it's more of a child-oriented game, mm-hmm. which I get because I feel that's really what Nintendo goes for. Um, mm-hmm. I can't really blame them for that because any kid who sees a game they want, their parents are probably going to buy it for them. It's a good way to make money. But the game itself has a lot of technical aspects that most people probably don't know about if they've never played it in depth. Okay. So how many Pokemon games are there right now? There, there's about four or 5,000, I think, that have been released just this year alone. <laughs> oh, like, God. How many are um, there? I think just the mobile games, there's, I think, like 20-ish. Oof. Yeah, there's a few GameCube games, uh, a few Wii games. There's a lot. And how many of them have you played? More than half. More than half. Okay, so you have a pretty good (laughs) perspective to bring to it. Yeah. So Uh, when did Pokemon first come about? um, I believe it was like 1995-ish, 97, somewhere around there. did you hop on it around that time, or did you get into it a little bit later in life? Well, I would have been three, so... So yes. A little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, but you did play it throughout your childhood, basically. Yeah, yeah so, that's okay. I the first uh, game I ever got for anything was when my aunt gave me a big gray Game Boy and a Mario game, and the Mario game was fun. I played it a little, and then my dad got me Pokemon Blue, and I played that until the game died. Uh, was... I had Pokemon Blue on the Purple Crystal Game Boy Color. Nice. <laughs> I've still yet to play one. Yeah. Um, the thing about Pokemon is over time it has changed a lot. The very first game, the way that the battle mechanics work and all that, they don't look whatsoever like the current battle mechanics. Okay, go into that. How did it change? What was the old and what's the new? Well, um, to start with, there was 15 Pokemon types. They're all just different elements. And it was, you'd have a team of six, you'd send out one Pokemon at a time, Uh, As you leveled up, you would beat Pokemon, uh, your stats would increase, it was fairly straightforward. In the current game, there's 649 Pokemon, 17 different types, 559 possible moves. Uh, You can have up to three Pokemon on the field on both sides at once. There's four player battles. And leveling up is significantly different than it was in the first games in that the Pokemon you beat determine the stat increases you get. So it's very different. Hmm. All right, so let's go into the Let's Play side of things now. So on Something Awful, uh, in case people don't know, they are for the most part not allowed, with some exceptions. And there have been some that have been uh, well-received. There was one by, I think it was Matroixer, who did uh, Pokemon, I want to say Blue, and it was a really glitched-out, crazy playthrough of it. Very unique and basically just breaking the game apart, if I have my facts straight. So there have been Pokemon LPs hosted on SA, but the reason they are banned is because in the past, in um, in the Sandcastle and people who have made threads, it all followed a very similar format, and then I think that's where some of the perception came about that all these games are the same, there's no way you can really let's play them and present them, it's screenshot, here's what you're doing, screenshot, here's what you're doing. So you think that there is a good way to let's play them, not just glitching them out necessarily, but a way to present them as they are. So uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I've watched uh, a lot of them on YouTube that are not great. A lot of people will try and focus it more on themselves or they'll choose some sort of just off-topic subject that they'll discuss during the game or like when uh, you guys reps prayed that one, the dude dubbed over his own lines and all of that crazy stuff. (laughs) Right. Yeah, so Um, they're basically using a popular game as a platform to attract viewers to show themselves off. Yeah. 
essentially. Right. Yeah. And then a lot of people will go and play the lesser known, like there's a lot of ROM hack games and all that. And I mean, those aren't terrible if you've never played the game, but it still tends to sidetrack a lot. Um, the only Pokemon Let's Plays I've ever seen that I thought were really done right were the one on Chugga Conroy's channel. Mm -hmm. He focuses on the game. He cuts out all the annoying grinding that's optional, all that. He keeps his uh, audience involved. He lets them name the Pokemon. He has fun. He chooses stuff that he doesn't usually use, but he still focuses on the game itself. He doesn't sidetrack off into any too far off topic tangents or anything like that. Doesn't he also provide some technical sidebars or just kind of trivia, something on the side that he adds in? He does. When he enters a new area, he'll have sidebars on the side of Pokemon you can encounter. If he finds one that he's never seen in the Let's Play yet, he'll have a whole graphic about it. He really keeps you interested in what he's doing. All right. So do you do Pokemon LPs? I don't do LPs of any sort. Okay. Do you watch Pokemon LPs more or do you play Pokemon games more? Um, I haven't played the games much of late, but... Uh, I watched two or three of Chugga's LPs. I actually watched a Let's Play a game I myself have already played through and beaten mm. because he was that interesting. He did it right. He didn't distract from the story itself, and I actually found it really good. What's the cutest Pokemon? There is a wrong answer to this. Oh, oh God. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> the answer is Whalmer. Well... <laughs> I'm going to refer okay. to the chat for their thoughts on this because I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, um, <laughs> What's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> um, mine would probably be Lucario. The answer is Whalmer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but I, I feel like with the Pokemon games, part of the reason they get a bad rap is everyone sees the story, which is aimed more at just picking up the game whenever you want and playing through it just for fun. You don't have to go and grind or anything they keep you going you know where you're supposed to go but most of the people i know who play the game play it for the competitive battling and the end game basically you can spend hundreds of hours getting one pokemon to have the correct stats that you want which as crazy as it sounds people do are there any diabetic uh, pokemon <laughs> not that i well there is an ice cream cone if that helps whatsoever i just vomited <laughs> and your favorite pokemon game okay actually let me rephrase that question so if i'm me have never played a pokemon game i am me by the way so this isn't really hypothetical but i haven't played a pokemon game and say i wanted to try one of this bullshit out there's about you know fifty thousand games to choose from <laughs> Which one do you recommend as an entry point? Or not even as an entry point, just, you know, gives you the Pokemon experience. Is it yellow? Is it blue? Is it orange is the new black? Which Pokemon? The snap. Pokemon which, Snap. Which, Pokemon Snap. Uh, yeah. Which um, one? I would probably go with Pokemon Emerald. It's midway through the series. It's got a little upwards of 300 Pokemon that were out at that time. The story is not insanely long, but they got all the mechanics just right. It's actually a sequel to Ruby and Sapphire, so they fixed glitches, bugs, story problems in that. And I'd say if you had to pick one to start, it's probably the most fun. So story, there's story? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, not just like, it's just like an RPG. I've heard that the story yeah. was, you could basically condense the story to a single directive, which was, uh, let me just look it up here, got to catch them all? <laughs> I've never actually, in the game, the joke about Gotta Catch Em All is you have an encyclopedia called a Pokedex, and it logs every time you catch a Pokemon. I've never bothered finishing a Pokedex in any of my games. There's no real point to it, even though they decided to make that the kind of theme of the TV show and the catchphrase for the entire franchise. Um, you could if you wanted, but the thing with all the games is they're basically just recycling the same story over and over, you're on a different continent each time. You have to battle these trainers and then get to the Elite Four. And somewhere along the way, you'll find the evil team. Uh, they'll basically be misusing Pokemon for some sort of evil goal. You'll beat them. You'll catch a Pokemon that's way overpowered. So even if you're a five-year-old playing the game, you can complete it because now you're overpowered as hell. And you just go through the game and then you're done. All right. So check out Emerald if you have not played Pokemon. 
Although I've noticed that the chat kind of disagrees. Yeah, well, the the chat was also posting slash fiction, so okay, I'm not going to well, refer to them much. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, well, you it were is? supporting them, so apparently it is. Oh. It is. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, yeah. I didn't know you were into that diabetes. I will never look at you the same way again. I, I didn't know I was. <laughs> I'm learning new things about myself in this Retsu talk. Oh, God. All right, well, John, any last words on Pokemon before we move on? Um, I'd say if you like the Final Fantasy series, you will be surprised how similar to it Pokemon is. Interesting. That's a yeah. good sell, I think. Interesting. That, I, I thought so. Are you stoked <laughs> for, um, what is it? What's the new ones? Uh, X and Y. X and Y. And yeah, they look cool, but it's also going to take about 250 bucks to buy the new console and then one of the new games. So I don't know how long it's going to be before I actually get that one. But they've got a bunch of cool new stuff they're introducing and... They're taking old Pokemon that nobody uses and giving them new boosts, so they're more popular, and I like how they're going in that direction. There we have it. <laughs> Pokemon. The definitive Pokemon chat. It's over. We've learned it all. Gotta learn it all, frankly. Man, try to sound less disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not disgusted. <laughs> Look, I said we wanted to bring alternate perspectives on things, and I did that. Oh god, I screwed it up. <laughs> So thank you, John, for your Pokemon perspective, your PP. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No problem. Have a good one. You too. See ya. Good guest. Good guy. I like Pokemon. How many Pokemon games have you played? I have played maybe three. I have finished none. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever I... finished a video game? <sighs> no. Okay. <laughs> Do you need to talk about it? I have commitment issues, mm -hmm. and I don't think I can commit to talking about them. Okay, okay. Well, apparently we have run about an hour and ten minutes. I have one more guest who I confirmed on the books. How, how are you feeling so far? Do you want to try to go as long as two hours, bring some of the backups that we had talked about, or end it after this next one? I can go all day. Because I've got Retsu a lot talks, of things to do. <laughs> Retsu so. talks are typically about an hour long, and we are over time. Whoa. Overtime. But our next guest is a gentleman by the name of Ryan. He had a very simple sales pitch, which enticed me, interested me. Again, a lot of the sales pitches were very broad topics that I had no idea where to even begin addressing or that would wind up being a two to three hour podcast. And I noticed that the Pokemon chat, by the way, boosted our viewership up to beyond 700. So thank you, John. You brought the Pokemon crowd with you. <laughs> But yeah, a lot of this, a lot of the things people want to talk about, and besides the our games are art, our, our, our games are art, which is exactly what they said. I was just reading it. Uh -huh. Were things like our games getting less creative? And I read that and I just went, uh, I don't yes, know. the end. Yes. Oh yeah, I can condense it to a simple yes/no. It's good. Uh, let's see. What, let me scroll through some of these other topics here before we go to the next guest. What were? What was another one that was that gave you the stink eye? I don't want to be mean to anybody. Be mean. Come on, be a dick. Come on, this is your chance. Um, day one DLC. That's that's a good topic, I think. Well, I mean, I, I, I think don't it's really probably have... been pretty well tread by other video game podcasts. That's probably true, and I don't have a very strong opinion on it because I'm not really a, a DLC connoisseur myself, so I just tend to ignore it. Well, why don't you get the next guest in here before right. I have to badmouth anybody? All right, fine. Red Supre is all about badmouthing things. Where where where'd you cave? Did you? Our next guest is <laughs> Ryan. Reset. Let's do a soft reset on this podcast. His sales pitch was: "Hello, I saw your call to action on the Facebook, and here's my pitch. I've spent a great deal playing online games, ranging from Call of Duty on Xbox Live to StarCraft. I have several stories." I, I, I believe him, and find that it is overall a funny topic to discuss. I agree. I also have a better mic than most YoTube LPers. Uh, YoTube is an offshoot of YouTube, is my understanding. It's just people saying hi to each other. Yeah, it's just a kind of a very communal channel. People just saying hi and then hanging up. So this is Ryan. He has stories to tell. So let me find Mr. Ryan. And bring him in. Let's hear what stories this gentleman has to tell about the online gaming world. And share to him if you have any as well from your Dark Souls experience. Hello, Ryan. You're on the air. Hello. Well, 
it's kind of ironic how you started off with saying how you don't want to badmouth anyone, but it'll probably end up with me badmouthing the League of Legends community of about 40 million people. That's oh, fine. I am all for badmouthing them. So basically, like, what I failed to convey in my pitch was I want to mainly talk about the communities of online games and basically how shitty they are. Go but for it. Stand on your soapbox. <laughs> well, quick credentials, I... Started off getting a PlayStation 3 to play Metal Gear Solid 4, and then after Me too. That, was, that was back in the day where the PlayStation 3 library was four games, so I started playing I tried Call of Duty, and then eventually got peer pressured onto Xbox Live, where I spent probably a year to two playing Halo and Call of Duty. That was probably, I think I played from Modern Warfare 2 to Modern Warfare 3, so I wish I had those years back, but, um, <laughs> and then slowly moved on to PC gaming, where I rec- where I play StarCraft and Dota 2 primarily, but I've also played a lot more niche games. Well, probably the worst thing about playing online games is the people you play with, and I would say it's largely worse than the- on PC because for really? Xbox or P or PlayStation, you can just unplug your microphone and headset and like not listen to anyone. But like if you're in a game of League of Legends and the chat's right there, it's kind of hard to ignore the flamboyant 12 year olds you're playing with so <clears throat> so is it that. that league of legends is very elitist or they have high expectations and if you do not meet set expectations they just immediately hop down your throat well that's the, thing about, heard. the thing about league of legends is if you're playing a game of call of duty that's like 12 on 12 and one person's doing bad it doesn't really hurt the team as much as outside of giving a score advantage to the other team but on league of legends when it's you're in a five-man game and one person on your team is constantly dying giving gold and experience the other team then like it really puts leans the game in their favor which makes it less enjoyable and then everyone gets angry and no one has a good time basically and i would say another big problem with league of legends is the way that is inherently it's free to play so you can make another account easily and there's these things called smurf accounts which is basically people when they get to level 30 and are good at the game they'll make a level one account and just play with other new in play with new players of the game, which kind of makes it hard to get into the game and learn. So, so with League of Legends, is that element of randomness with your teammates always there, or can you? Is it easy enough just to have your usual crew of? I, I don't know how big teams are, but your crew of however many it is, and just play with them consistently. Or do you um, kind of have to have that random noob with you at all times? Um, if you browse like forums or whatever, you probably you'll hear the. Oh my god, solo queue is the worst thing. Ch- chance all the time because no one likes playing by themselves. With your friends, it's fine, but it's mainly is no one likes playing with randoms in that game. And there's a lot of trash talk to them, and it's just overall, most times, not always a great experience. But, the th- like, as bad as League of Legends gets, I would say the worst gaming communities you get with are the very niche gaming communities. Like, um, I'm familiar with Left 4 Dead at all. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you go on, like, a Left 4 Dead with random people, like, those are some of the meanest people you'll ever encounter, in re- like, of all time. So I can sort of see that. I mean, it's yeah. a high-stress game, and when you have, like, a, such a small team, you're pretty much fucked if someone uh, doesn't know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. I, haven't played... I, w- I don't think I would ever play with uh, all randoms Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't either. Game. Yeah, I haven't played Left 4 Dead or 2 in a long time, but the maps are also very, you know, it's very regimented where you go when things happen. So there's usually kind of a set, you know, mindset that you have going into it. You know, it's time to do this now, go here now, you know, stake out your spots and whatnot. So if you have somebody who isn't in the know on that, then I can see how that'd be frustrating. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, yeah I, it's mainly just like, Typically, the smaller the smaller the team you get, the more high stress it is, especially in games like League of Legends or Left 4 Dead. And I would say the worst community I've ever played with was when Dota 2 was still in beta and I didn't have access. I played a little bit of Dota on Garena, which is a custom client, and those people take the game more seriously than most pros do, and they're a lot meaner. And they're like I would say hands down the angriest individuals I've ever met in real life online. The angriest. And- like, I can't even see how they can actually enjoy a game where they just, like... Yeah, exactly. That's why I was laughing when you said angry. It's just like, why are you playing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just mad the whole time you're playing. What enjoyment are you getting from playing in the first place? You're just at your keyboard clicking going, Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just chill out. Please. 
The best is when, like, they try to insult you by saying you're retarded, but they put a T at the end of the word. <laughs> and then it's just... Like, specifically, I remember I was playing a game a couple weeks ago, and, like, someone, one of my team was raging about a champion being overpowered or whatever they say. I told him just to... I told him politely just to build this item, and it'll help you counter them. And then he just said, no, they're just overpowered. You're retarded. <laughs> and it's just... And it's especially bad on League of Legends when you get a lot of um, people who don't speak English very well because it's not their first language on the servers. And, like, I think Devo touched upon that a while ago, but it's just, like... I would consider the tower defense game a mini game, and like the actual focus of the game is just the all chat. Is that's where you try? That's where you invest your time, and like you basically just play the game, and you're waiting for more chat messages to come in. Right. Hmm. So you've also played StarCraft Two. That seems like the kind of opposite end of the spectrum as far as, like, for lack of a better word, manners goes. Because I played a little bit of StarCraft Two and the expansion, and you know, when you play the multiplayer, there's always that good luck, have fun, good luck, have fun. There's kind of a Kind of an etiquette, I think, that's inherent to it. Um, I would say, like, the start, like, the thing with, like, StarCraft versus League of Legends is the two main kind of people on League are either angry or just the LOL, LOL, must troll everyone people. Right. But on StarCraft 2, you're actually with people who enjoy the game and, like, actually are polite and just want to have it focus on the game, not the chat. You will, of course, get the occasional person who is from, like, 4chan or whatever and needs to troll everyone. But for the most part, the community is a lot more focused on the game and not just... A little less retarded. <laughs> yeah, basically. Right. Especially because there's no team element in the majority of the games. So it's 1v1. So Right. So what game have you had the most pleasant experience with online that you would recommend? As far as like actually enjoying the gameplay itself, I'm a huge fan of Dota 2. But if you want to just like interact with the community, probably outside. But... Hmm. What is outside? I've never heard of that before. I thought you meant like go, or do you mean going outside and or is outside and interacting an expansion with to an Dota? actual community yeah. in real life? Well, if you don't live in New Jersey like I do, it's a pretty good experience. But so <laughs> period, yeah. But I would say basically, the lesson everyone should take is don't. If you're about to hit enter and have a message, don't. You're better <laughs> off just saying silent and not interacting with. The same people you went to elementary school who have never grown up. So, Ooh! <laughs> but don't Anna, be a Yosemite Sam when you play this. video games online, please. <laughs> Ooh, said, I hate but, that hacker. <laughs> but it's even better in like Dota Two, and they actually have built-in voice chats. So you'll just see the microphone icons pop up and just hear like random stuttering and like yelling in bad accents or whatever. Mom's so. in the background saying dinner's ready. <laughs> I have heard that a lot. So. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I've also I also probably the best story from Dota Two is I've heard like some like basically stereotypical Jewish grandmother stop playing that fucking game you've been on there for four hours and in the middle of the game and then if you had an online experience where you um, you're playing with a random dude and kind of just got along with them really well because I remember I was playing one of the old Halo games back in the day it was on Xbox Live and I was playing with these uh, British gentlemen they were. Very nice, and then we just kind of talked a little bit after the fact, and then did some random, you know, 2v2 things together, or 3v3 and whatnot, and got along quite well. Does that ever happen to you, or is it usually more of the opposite? I have a story about that, but go ahead. Uh, if I'm playing with friends, we're having a good time, and, like, we meet, like, if we're, like, a team of four and we have a fifth person on our team, and he's a cool guy, we'll probably, like, friend him and play with him once or twice in the near in the future. But, like, I haven't made any best friends online who I share all my deepest secrets with, so... Mm. Uh, I used to be in a, a TF2 clan. I still am at heart. Um, called the at Olive heart. Garden at heart. Yeah, I mean they're my. The, it's a clan with my uh, best friend and uh, some of his other friends, and uh, we sort of uh, met and started hanging out with this other clan. Um, and now we have a convention every year where we all meet together and have uh, in a different city and have fun. It's a. Uh, it's really cool. In a yeah. different city. TF2 is one of the best online communities. It's, I would say, close to being mainstream because the people there, it's not they don't take it as seriously as Call of Duty, and they're all there to have a good time. So, Yeah, I tried getting like, into TF2 for a little while, and it was never the community that bothered me. It was just the um, I had such a low baseline of skill coming into it that I always, <laughs> you know, you know, always coming in last place and uh, well, not I really mean, contributing much. That's and then, me. 
basically. But yeah, yeah just feeling like, you know, why am I doing this? It was, it's not apparent that I'll probably improve much anytime soon. Well, no one really cares about like how good you are on TF2. They're just all there just to have fun. So it's kind of like, fair. Yeah. like, I don't think I've ever seen or been on the receiving end of trash talk in TF2. Like the only part that kind of breaks TF2 and like is the hacking, I would say, like that you do get one every so often. What does that but, enable them to do? Like see through walls and stuff like that? Uh, it depends. Like I've seen people who are just invincible. There's a lot of like, there's two kinds of hacking. There's online hacking where you actually like hack the servers and change how your character plays. Then there's where you just hack the game files on your computer, like change textures to be clear so you can see through them. And just like, that's a lot more common on PC than it is Xbox. I would say it used to be really common on like the original Xboxes with J with J tagging and all that stuff, but still on the computer it's gotten better. But like for older games like Call of Duty and Day of Defeat, you're still going to see a lot of hacking. But it's not often enough where it breaks the game, but it's just like kind of an annoying thing. All right, everybody, uh, chill out, learn to spell, and uh, don't hack. And don't be retarded. Don't be retarded. That's good story. So if you were to if there was something that you could, some nominal change that you could put to a community that you think is bad or toxic, like League of Legends, for example, is there any fix to it that you can think of that would, like... Isn't there some sort of uh, system where you get, like, reputation for being nice on League of Legends? Uh, but, yeah, kind of, but I haven't really seen a change since that. Mainly, it's just everyone like saying "honor me, honor me" in all chat at the end of the game. So Is there's it not like really Reddit much. Reddit upvotes, useless. Like yeah, that? basically. Yeah. And um, just a quick thing I wanted to say about Reddit is, um, there actually is a subreddit. I forget what it's called. I think it's just r slash outside where they treat the real world like an actual MMORPG, <laughs> and it's pretty entertaining. But other than that, the best way to fix the online community would be something similar to Jonestown. But Jonestown? Yeah. Where they just had like a mass suicide of everyone drinking a punch. <laughs> oh, but... right. you were literally referencing Jonestown. Okay. okay. <laughs> but other than that, I don't see any actual. Oh, I hate the suicide pact. <laughs> I told you this was a suicide pact. Now <laughs> they're hacking the punch. But other than that, there's not really a good way to just don't interact. Period. But yeah, so don't talk. Don't reach out. Be alone and... forever. Yep, don't have, and don't have a microphone plugged in if you have an angry family member who likes to scream while you're playing a game. Are they also playing the game at the same time? <laughs> it depends. Mom, Some people... quit hacking! <laughs> Mom, you fucking feed her. <laughs> All right. Well, Ryan, thanks so much for your time. No problem. And play more games. I'll try not to. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Well, I want to play more games now. How about you? Um, I'm inspired. Eh. No, not so much. I'm kind of over competitive online games. Yeah, I I'm am too. just not uh, well, just not very good. Well, that's the thing. It just takes it's you know like a Malcolm Gladwell ten thousand hours to be masterful at something. You know, just when you're out of college and shit, you just don't have that kind of time to dedicate to games anymore. If you yep. want to be competitive, I like co-op though. Co-op I'm down with, definitely. And Dark Souls. <laughs> if they had a full co-op like mode for Dark Souls, I'd be I'd definitely be super down with that. I wonder if that's something they're gonna work on to improve a bit in the sequel, is making the co-op and multiplayer aspects a little more streamlined. Because there's a lot of waiting sometimes involved with that. Your thoughts? Uh sure. Okay, good. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are... That was the last topic that we had planned to pursue. We do have alternatives. We are running, actually, right about at an hour and a half. A little over standard podcast length. But should we end it now, or do you want to hear some more segments? How, how, what are you feeling, Jerry Doom? You're the co-host here. I kind of want to talk about video game movies. <laughs> video game movies? All right. Uh, well, let's... If that person's around. Who was that person? I'm trying to remember. Dane. 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 Yeah, that was Dane. Let's check. Our friend Dane. He is not online. All right. What about the Tim Miller guy? Who yes. did who's, uh, did a uh, translation for you guys. Yes, Tim. Friend of the show, Tim. Let's bring him in. 
He is Tim a, time. It's Tim time. Tim the translation man, Taylor. <laughs> Met him at PAX, very nice fella. Tim! Hey, Kikoyeru. Eh? You're on the hey. air, how's it going? Oi, oi, oi. Hi, minasan konnichiwa. <laughs> you are translating. <laughs> it's like you're translating your own conversation yes. on the fly. It's amazing. That's really. Yes, I, I know. It's amazing. Amazingly Thank skillful. You. How'd you do hey, that? Don't, don't worry, I, hey. <laughs> uh, I so, know. So, Tim, you would describe your fluence in Japanese at 100%, 90%, uh, 1000%? Uh, yeah, hi. Go haku. this. Oh, he was I, asking us I to hack. I can't understand what no, this guy's no. saying. Well, he's saying, hang up. Well, go haku means hack a League of Legends game, I believe, <laughs> is what he was yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, no, it's it's well enough that I feel like I can translate some stuff, yes. Yeah, and you actually, uh, so you've been translating, are you st par partially translated, uh, which long play was it that we uh, did? Shinobi X. Shin Shinobi. Shinobix, yeah. Yeah, Shinobix. Uh, probably 10 minutes of it before I gave up. <laughs> but, um... I enjoy doing that. Uh, I just I was watching it and I'm like I really want to do some translation stuff for you guys and because yeah. why it helped me I figured give me something to do and so I started to do it and I was thinking which one would be a good one to do and originally I wanted to do just an RP like a Billy MC or something like that because I figured that would be really funny and I, but I thought about it I'm like okay I would have to translate you slow beef. Billy MC and whoever else was right. there, and possibly the game. It's hard to translate southern accents into Japanese. Yeah, I think. It, it, yeah. it is. I, I managed to do it. I think I did. A good is job. there a but, Japanese no. character for y'all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think I can get some kana to make that work. Well, darn um, But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I basically I was going through and looking at ones I could do, and it's like, man, there's gonna be a lot of text on the screen, and no one's gonna give a shit. But with Shinobi X, I figured it'd be easy because then it's just you and uh, slow beef. Right. The game is in Japanese, so if you want to hear the game, just you can listen to the dialogue. And I'm like, this should work. It's not Hold on, simple, okay. Hang but... on. I'm I'm a little unclear. You translated their commentary into Japanese? Yeah, into Japanese. Oh, okay. I thought you translated into... a game into no. English. Well, I, I, I did I I was doing some of that. I'm I wanna get I'll get into that later. But Okay. Uh, Alright, go ahead. I was but for that but this I translated into Japanese. Um, so their commentary and I got about 10 minutes. I got, I made one part 10 minutes long. Uh, I think it's the first two levels if I remember correctly. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, probably my favorite line, if I can remember it was right at the beginning with the first opening scene, uh, where I think it was slow beef. He says, uh, ninja no te onera mitai da na, something like that, it, which is a ninja, literally I translate it as a ninja hand fart. <laughs> so if you want to say Ninja Hand Fart, I think that's a pretty good way of doing it. Well, it seems like a Ninja Hand Fart. That's going to be the highlight uh, of this podcast, I think. Yes, yes. I'm going to use that I, one. There's a, there's, a, there's a few really good ones I like. I, I gave it to a Japanese friend of mine to edit to make sure I got it right, and she thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, <laughs> so there was, she, she didn't see the video, and so she just read what I wrote. She had no <laughs> reference. And she's like, what the fuck happened? She but, pushed um, you to ask, what are you translating? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what is this? But the other issue is when I got to later parts, I was going through it. I'm like, most of the humor, parts of it were from the translation themselves. Like, the grammar being wrong. Like, one part at the beginning was like, I sigh, I'll need one more. Like, the spelling was wrong. Oh. How do you translate that? You can't, really. It's not It's not really translatable. So, parts of it were funny. You can't really translate it. So, there were other parts like that where I was like, this is gonna be hard, uh, and then I sort of gave up on it. But mostly also because there wasn't a lot of response. I put it up on YouTube and Nico Nico Doga. I got a few nice messages on Nico Nico though. Some people actually asked me like, "Are you gonna do part two? I was like, "What's uh, Nico Nico Doga?" Oh, that's a that's a uh, Japanese video sharing site. Oh, okay. Um, Way to yeah. be a guy, Jim Cherry dude. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, the, I, I know, know that. Word. I assume everybody knows. I'm sorry, but um, some people actually really liked it. But yeah, it wasn't many. <laughs> it was, I think, maybe less than a hundred people. That's awesome. Uh, it was me 99 times. No. Um, <laughs> so, but the, some people liked it. So, you might have got a few Japanese fans out of it. So, the other I thing hope. you wanted to bring in was, I'm assuming, or you've said as much that there are also Japanese let's plays. 
Oh yeah, uh, GQ plays. Uh, yeah. I love watching those. So I was curious. I think one person told me on my Ask FM page that it was almost expected. Like in the English Let's Plays, you know, you, you hear a person reading text on the screen. If it's posted on something, all people are like, no, don't do that. That's you don't, there's no reason to do that. But I heard in Japanese Let's Plays that's not only encouraged but also kind of expected. Is that yeah? There's a accurate? lot. Of, there's a, there's definitely a lot of that to bring. Yeah, it's. I wouldn't say it's annoying. It's kind of, if anything, for me, it's very helpful because it means I don't have to do. If I don't know a word, I can just listen to it. I don't have to. Oh yeah, uh, sure. which is for me, it's very helpful. But um, for uh, yeah, it, it, they're weird in a way. It's a lot of them I've seen, like a good amount try to emulate Japanese television. So they'll have like a shitload of like just words, phrases, things just popping out. Just the editing is just for some of them is very chaotic. I think like, the only, I think the only Japanese let's play thing I've seen was these Mario 64 videos where they're trying to, you know how when you get the one up mushroom at times it'll follow you until you get it. Hmm. And the whole goal was to spend as much time avoiding that as possible just oh, yeah. running yeah. around the level. And it was just hilarious cuz yeah, yeah. it's just people freaking out when the mushroom is it's creative, yeah. Yeah. And they're just freaking out when it gets anywhere close to them. It's just it's hilarious to listen to even though I have no idea what they're saying yeah. or what's it's, going on. Yeah, there, it's there there's a lot of really creative ones I've seen like that where or there's one I saw where it was like um I think it was a non-Japanese person but it was somebody I think playing Skyrim in English. And they were translating it while playing it, like that. And that was really interesting to hear that or see what they were doing. Um, there was somebody I remember, oh man, uh, who's playing Super Mario Brothers X, this uh, fan-made game, and had like, like one he was terrible at the game, which was pretty funny. Uh, but there's a lot of Eng there's English in the game, the like dialogue, mm -hmm. and he doesn't know English, so he kept trying to phonetically pronounce it. And failing, and then eventually he just gave up to go. Ah, what kind of like he just is like, I don't I don't know what it says. I gave up. And but there's a part in the game where you have to change characters, and the game tells you what to do to change characters, but he doesn't know it because he can't read it. <laughs> so he spent a good ten minutes trying to figure it out on his own, <laughs> and it was just like wow, it's just weird. But yeah. Uh, so a lot of people in the chat are asking for a link to the video that you translated. Oh, the link? It's on my YouTube. Uh, and your YouTube is? Uh, YouTube.com slash InnerLogic. Uh, should be. Uh, if it's not, then enjoy that person's videos. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> also does translation videos, oddly enough. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's on there. Uh, actually, yes, it's on the front page. I put it there. Oh, 300 people. That's nice. But, um... Uh, yeah. So, any other differences in how Japanese Let's Plays are presented versus English ones? Just any little nuances that you think are different as far as how they choose to present the game versus how others do? Well, it's a, well, a good amount are basically just like English ones in, w in which that they're annoying. Uh, <laughs> like, there's a lot of, like, on YouTube, there's a lot of Minecrafts, a lot of, you know, Aoni, horror game, RPG maker stuff, like, where a lot of people are just doing, or there's not really, I don't know about scare cams, but there's a few I've seen scare cams that are... Didn't you send me one once? Um... Scare? I don't know. I might have. I sent a few. Um, there's some camcorder ones I remember just uh, that I've sent. Uh, but yeah, but just there's a lot of them are like English ones in which they're annoying. But there's some <laughs> that are just. Um, it's it's good that there are things that bring all of our varying yeah, cultures a lot together. Of, a, a lot of people like playing Minecraft, and it's still fucking boring no matter what language it's in. Uh, <laughs> Where it's like, what? except there's a lot more text on the screen where people are just, you know, ah, something's funny. I'm going to write it. Woo. Are there any uh, LPs of Eroge? I don't know what that is. Erotic games. Oh, really? Wow, that's really sad. I didn't know. Well, actually, no, I guess it's a good thing I didn't know that I'm not totally ruined yet. Uh, probably, <laughs> definitely. Absolutely, there are. Um, not so much on YouTube. Nico Nico Doga, that I think it's more allowed. Um, lots of dating sim stuff. Idol mm -hmm. Master, of course, yeah. in, which is just embarrassing. I've seen a few Idol Master uh, 
uh, Let's Plays, and man, that I have no idea how people can play it. Uh, it's nice to be able to watch it, though. Uh, somebody else bothered, but fuck, I don't know. Like, dating sim stuff, I don't... Really oh, understand. I-D-O-L. I was thinking I-D-L-E. <laughs> uh, also, oh. also, I've seen... Uh, actually, there was one time I've seen the Danganronpa Let's Play as well, where I could watch the end. I beat you said we game. weren't talking about that anymore. I know, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <sighs> I didn't beat that game, though. I have no idea why people love that game, but it's okay. Ooh. There, there's my opinion. My opinion. It's okay. Oh. And now it's over. <laughs> Prepare That's to have it. your YouTube like... channel spam, sir. I, I'm fully appreciative of that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, it... mm-hmm. uh, do you have anything else? Um, I was going... I originally... For PAX, uh, I was helping Owen Ronan do the translation for Murder on the Eurasian Express, which was the f- from Japanese to English translation. In so much as I don't think he did any because <laughs> he was too busy. Oh, so yeah, I saw that. I did most. So I think I got probably about 50% of the way through, and then I got caught up with work. I couldn't really get back to it, and I don't think anybody else actually uh, picked up the slack. So I'm thinking of starting that again. Nice. Is um, it a game that you think is RPable? Oh, absolutely! It's yeah. the acting in that game, the overacting. Yeah, we uh, say, we saw. Pretty... Yeah, I saw that. I think it was ten minute kind of a prototype that Orn Ronan, or maybe it was you, sent over, and yeah, it, it was looked Orn promising. Ronan. It was Orn Ronan. Yeah, it looked yeah. promising. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, the acting in that game. I remember um, the I forget her name, but one of the girls in it. Uh, I remember showing um, my Japanese friend at the time. Uh, showed her the uh, uh, this girl who's acting in it to check the um my translation she's like this is supposed to be a high school girl right she's like 30 <laughs> uh, and i'm like yeah that's uh that's what you get in this game people are uh, very developmentally behind that's yeah. about 30 oh, years before considering they what, yeah. uh, considering um what she does in the game yeah definitely i oh. agree with that uh, <laughs> she's not the smartest cookie uh but that definitely adds to the charm there's a lot of weird ass characters in it the game itself actually isn't that bad it's just it's weird which I think is very RPable. I just have to get back into actually uh, finishing what I start. All right, well, but, you have a yeah. few days to do it, so. Yeah, okay, I'll get, get, get on it, please. Yeah. Yeah, before the quarter ends, okay. Yeah, exactly, so, before, before <laughs> the, the Q3's out. Yeah. A quota to maintain. Tim, come on, okay. keep it up. I'll, I'll try my best. Thank you. Uh, well, Tim, thank you for your input, sir. Always good having you on. Yeah, uh, thanks. And hope to see I, you again at PAX 2014. I'll, I'll hopefully we'll be there. Awesome. Yeah. All right, man, take care. See ya. See ya. See ya. That was Tim. Good guy. Tim time is now over. Tim time is over. So we are about an hour and 40. You don't have to keep. I can see a clock. Yeah. I'm just telling the chat in case they don't know. There's a very satanic number of people watching the stream live right now. Oh, shit. It's uh, always refreshing. So I better not end it yet or there's going to be some blood probably coming out the screen at some point. So we had a couple other backup talks how about um melodic waffle melodic waffle what was his talking about the perception of the lp oh that would be good yeah that would be good where is that fella at oh let me read his pitch so it was i don't know if this too quote i don't know if this topic's too general as a whole or too specific for the goon part of the audience but something that's interested me is the way lp is perceived on the subform the something awful subform as in, there are a few different perspectives on what is presentable and what is not, as well as whether LP is serious or just for fun, especially as it comes up in the sandcastle when someone presents their LP. Like, what is the standard for, quote-unquote, presentable, when we have people who like and people who hate certain things in their LPs? I also want to talk about this question of what are you bringing to the table that comes up every damn time there is a repeat LP in the sandcastle. And I think that's a good point he brings up, so let's get him... On the line, he is a waffle. He has delicious melodies to share. Let's bring him in and hear those waffle melodies and talk about the sandcastle. <laughs> and I should probably explain what that is for people who don't know. So while we're getting melodic waffle on the phone, the let's play. He's sand- here. Oh my god. Uh, I'm I'm a girl. By the way. <laughs> you promised diabetes. You, you have upset Cherry Doom. Oh I'm shit! The I forgot to record. <laughs> I've kind of uh, forgotten about the whole recording thing at this point. I'm not. I'm just going to post the stream audio as is. Damn the consequences. Hello, Melodic Waffle. Hello. Hello, welcome to Retsu Talk. Thank you. 
So you brought up a good topic, I think. So for people in this chat and listening to it on uh, lipsunderitunes.com, the Let's Play Sandcastle is a sticky forum on the Let's Play uh, subforum. It's a general chat. People talk about whatever they want with Let's Plays, but most commonly it's where people put what they call test posts for stuff, like basically concepts of what they're doing, and then they get feedback and try to improve on a few things here and there, tweaks before posting. It's not something you have to do, but it's something that's encouraged. But it comes with, it's a, it's a strange territory at times, the way people overreact to things at times, which I think is not cool. At times it can be funny if it's like a laughably bad thing, but sometimes it's fine, and then people just take it very seriously. Is that kind of what you were thinking when you submitted yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I have, I kind of have a lot of problems with the sandcastle and while I don't really post in there very often if at all like I do follow the thread just to see like kind of upcoming LPs that people are thinking of doing so I could um, get ready to follow the thread mm -hmm. and um, there's a few things that I've noticed while um, re watching the sandcastle and it seems to be that there's a lot of uh, different um, like viewpoints on what exactly um, how people should be uh, handling their LPs. And I know that um, generally people say, like, LP isn't a serious thing. You shouldn't take it seriously. It's not a big deal to get worked up over. But um, I, a lot of people posting in that thread, um, I would kind of disagree that they're saying sort of the opposite of how they are responding to some people who post their LP pitches in the thread. Like, um, I know there's sort of kind of two aspects of making an LP. One is like on a te technical aspect and then on the actual content. And there's always, som sometimes people have this sort of uppity attitude about what exactly is being put on, put into the LPs, despite this whole LP is in serious, uh, "Quote unquote rule," I right, guess. Yeah. And it, I just notice this whenever there's, especially there's a new poster, like not really reg state um, posting, but maybe sometimes around there. And especially when they have like a VLP that's more um, like the friends sitting around the couch playing video games, sort of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it always gets kind of shit on for being quote-unquote low effort. Yeah, that's a uh, problem with the ones I used to be a frequent guest on. <laughs> yeah, it's at times it becomes less about looking at what might be technically wrong versus criticizing taste. Yeah, like a lot of people will make their criticism based on sort of what they want to see rather than yeah. what might be maybe not objective objectively good but like passable i suppose mm -hmm. and um i just find it weird especially because there have been lps like that in the past like i'm i'm relatively new to the forums like i only registered last year but i do remember like the tipping 40s and they're they're very much like that sort of like friends around the couch drinking beers and um playing video games mm -hmm. for the internet and uh i recall them being pretty popular actually like people actually did like their lps even if it wasn't like everybody but they did have successful threads right yeah they did yeah they oh, yeah, started definitely. yeah their first one and yeah i watched them too for a little while they did final fantasy 10 i think was their first one and yeah and that was that was the perfect game i think for that style because it's an easy game to shit on the story is kind of you know for dudes shitting on the couch it's easy to watch that and have some good jokes over it and it's the kind of thing that you can watch without, you know, you don't need to take Let's Play seriously. It's not like, you're not presenting the sphere grid adequately. You're just laughing at <laughs> Yuna's bad voice acting. Cut it out! You know, <laughs> things of that sort. So I, th yeah. I think it's very, con I think that style definitely has a place. And it's just yeah. a matter of taste. So if you like that, then that's fine. But, you know, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, sorry. I was, I was just about to say, because, like, that, that was the, actually the first VLP I ever watched was that Final Fantasy X. LP, and that was sort of how I even found something awful outside of like Red Prey itself. So, mm. I mean, it made a good enough impression on me. Right. <laughs> and although that might be because I've 
questionable taste, but <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just sort of thinking on that that makes me think, well, what exactly is presentable for the something awful subform and really the answer is kind of well that depends on your individual tastes right exactly. informative yeah. only <laughs> just the um, facts. if i don't laugh every 45 seconds it doesn't belong on this subform <laughs> yeah. but um i think another thing about the sandcastle is just that um i don't think that the people who post in the sandcastle necessarily represent these people who post in the sub forum at large yeah that's a that's a very good point yeah so someone will, might come into the sandcastle and pitch a perfectly presentable lp and um people will come in here and say like no that's not good like you shouldn't post that here and, yeah, and it can they be, never post again yeah and it can be just a case of of the people reading the sandcastle that sort of game just doesn't really appeal to them whereas if you shoot it out there and you know try there might there might be an audience for it, and I think that's the thing. The sandcastle is not really. You shouldn't take their word as, you know, law. You know, sometimes if you think if you got your technical shit worked out and you at least you know try anything worth doing is worth doing well, just give it a shot and then post it, and you know maybe it'll work. It's worth a shot. Yeah, and um, it's kind of sad how if you make a bad, if you make a bad first impression in the sandcastle, then it almost feels like it dooms any thread that you make for that pitch. Afterwards. I don't know about like, that. I mean, I would never look at the Sandcastle, so... <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't uh, color my... Uh, if yeah, they put, went on to post a thread, it definitely wouldn't color my opinion about it yeah, until I actually get, saw it myself. You might get one guy from the Sandcastle this season like, well, you you ignored my... <laughs> you know, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what they said. But then I guess, um, that'll be on like sorry, the first what? page. Like a guy on the first page might say that, but then it just kind of is forgotten about after that. I guess, but I would hope so. I would think so. I was just thinking about. I guess I was saying that based off one example, which I probably shouldn't have done. But um, <laughs> I was thinking specifically of uh, someone tried to do a Yoshi's Island LP, and and a lot of people sort of jumped all over it and said, eh, this isn't really that great, like, I don't really like your group dynamic, even though a lot of people thought it was fine, and, um, um, a lot, I guess a lot of people sort of brought up this question of, what are you bringing to the table with this LP? <laughs> That's a um, very, uh, <laughs> ridiculous which, question. It well, is, I mean, it that's, is, that's sort of like, isn't that like the, the basic, like, essay posting rules? Like, what are you bringing with your post or something like that? Well, it's contributing something, but what are you bringing right. to the table I mean, just sounds very snobby. I mean, I think if you're, if any new playthrough of a game, even if it's not, if it's been done before, is something that's being brought to the table, a different perspective. Exactly. Yeah, and I think there is, I think the reason they say that is if there is an LP of the same game happening, like, right now, yeah. Then, you know, th there is some reason to think about waiting just because if that thread is popular, then yours is more likely to just get kind of drowned out and just, you know, fall into the archives or just not get a lot of people watching it. So you're kind of depriving yourself of possible, um, you know, possible people watching it if you do that. So I think that's what okay. they're maybe trying to say. They're just asking about it in a very kind of silly way. I guess. I just, um, the the vibe I always get when someone asks that question is uh, it's just sort of the the same thing that's been asked every single time that an LP comes up that's already been done, even if the old LP was has already been archived and it's over and you can't find the thread outside of archives anymore, and it it just feels like this bland question that people sort of rely on in the Sandcastle just as a sort of like, hey, well you know someone already did this and I, I feel like just because someone has has done an LP of a certain game already, or that it's or that it's well, there's one already ongoing, I don't think that it's fair to sort of block them from kind of going along with it. And I know that the Sandcastle isn't like the authority on what goes through. Sure. But I mean, for example, there's. Uh, Five LPs of Final Fantasy IV. Dang. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's, there's, the two that have been archived, and then 
Leave My Wife and Silver Falcon, and then someone's doing a solo radio radio run right now. And somebody even left though... his wife to LP Final Fantasy IV. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. weird. Um... Wouldn't you? <laughs> you would, yeah. <laughs> and um, even though they're presented in sort of slightly different ways, like one might focus on the plot, one might be like trying to go for humor, and then there's the gimmick run. I mean, at the end of the day, you have five screenshot LPs of Final Fantasy IV, and they don't differ, like, a lot. And even if you read, like, multiple multiple LPs of that game, it's not like one of them detracts from the other, like, the, the experience. Yeah, I think that's kind of an important thing, is because at the end of the day, it's a forum, and all it is is a thread that's there. You don't yeah. have to look at it. So, yeah, it's no egregious offense if it's there when someone ignored your criticisms. Like, but it take, there's only 40 threads per page. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you go to the keyboard and say stuff. Yeah, I, I just find find it weird because um, when, I, when I was lurking back in, like, 2010 or so before I'd actually registered, I pretty much never looked at the actual thread. I would just read sort of the LP posts. Whereas when I actually registered, I started sort of paying attention more to things, and it was kind of surprising sort of how uh, pretentious some people are about this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Even even with the whole, like, LP isn't serious thing going on, I just... It I mean, felt kind of weird it's, and it's video contradictory. Games. It's yeah. video games, man. Yeah, and at the end of the day, we're all just sort of trying to have fun and be entertained and listen video others. games is art and <laughs> oh, no. it takes Not a again. professional to criticize art correctly. we're not presenting this with the artistic flourish it deserves <laughs> i don't know why that's my voice for anybody who has opinions i probably wouldn't agree with but there, there it is yeah. yeah so so any other thoughts um uh, nope that's all <laughs> jerry doom any other thoughts uh, be nice. <laughs> I know that's that essay isn't really the place to say that, but <laughs> well, it's be nice, but just have some common sense, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a test post for a playthrough of a video game that you're presenting for an internet audience, and I think with that comes an expectation to loosen up a little bit, not just let free form any garbage come out, but Adjust your expectations. Maybe. Anyone? <laughs> well, final thoughts. <laughs> we're good. Okay. Yep, we're done. <laughs> All right, so thank you, Melodic Waffle, for your perspective. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. All right, have a good one. Thanks, you too. So I think we learned a lot about the Sandcastle and ourselves. Yeah. We're at an hour and 55 minutes here. Oh, so now you're taking charge of the timer, huh? <laughs> well, I think that will probably do it for today. I just looked at my wrist even though a watch isn't there, and I, wow. I don't know why I just did that, because there's a, there's a clock on my computer. And a little yeah, Skype I... clock in the upper right. A little uh, timer. And the sun outside telling you. And the sun. Yeah, I have a sundial sitting right here beside me as well. And, and I need uh, to get to work in about seven hours. And uh, Oh, seven hours? You better get ready. Yeah. Well, I mean, I better go to sleep. Ah, well, that's... You have a weird job. Yep. So. Uh, basically testing blood at night. Testing blood at night. For uh, for what? HIV, to find out if it's a video LP or a screenshot uh, tetanus, LP. Uh, oh, actual things. Okay. <laughs> Syphilis, etc. Have you ever fucked up? Uh, many times. And One time, I literally looked at my watch and poured out a test tube <laughs> as I twisted my wrist. And now you have syphilis. Yep. Congratulations. That's why I can only have uh, uh, interactions online now. Right. Because <laughs> I'm a pariah. Uh, syphilis actually transmits through Skype, so I wish you had told me that. Oh, uh, Before... yeah, I might want to get checked. Oh, boy. Well, people watching live right now, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. This was an experiment. First time we've tried this, bringing in random guests, a hodgepodge of perspectives and topics. Uh, yeah. Wilmer for cutest Pokemon uh, 2013 through Infinity. Can debate that on the YouTube version whenever that goes up. <laughs> That'll be the 
whatever they get the top comment is probably the winner i'm guessing so uh, yeah um so yeah thanks folks for watching maybe we'll do this again sometime if this gets received well and if it doesn't get received well then we'll never do it again streaming is dead never no, try th anything <laughs> it's pointless to d do new things Clear. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me. And yep, thanks if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at stokedbro, at S T O K E D B R O. Mm -hmm. And uh, my Twitch channel is uh, Cherry Doom Games. So, uh, you know, follow me and watch me be bad at Dark Souls. So that's why you agreed to do this, so you could slip that in at the end? Of course. Why yeah. does anybody do anything? That's true. I'm at the Beatus, the underscore Beatus, on Twitter.com. My Twitch is what you're watching right now. And for those of you listening to the archive, it's Twitch TV slash the underscore Beatus. I think I plugged that last podcast. That's so a waste of time to do it again. Diabetes RP on YouTube. Archive and streams are going up there. I'm also starting to mirror Metroid Fusion up there. It'll start to go up this week. Because I finally fixed the audio issues that were wrong with it. Uh, thanks for having me as your co-host. I yeah. enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. It was fun. I think we learned a lot. Um, I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Speedruns are fast. Speedruns are fast, and um, I think that's the only Long thing we talked about. Long plays are slow. Uh, Dark Souls is fun. Yeah. And uh, don't spill syphilis on yourself. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we learned a lot. Good. See ya. Catch y'all next time.